um, you'd be fine. But if you want to host over the internet, you have to have the public address. Now, my public address, I'm just going to make up a number because I really don't know what it is and I have to search through the router. Oops, that's not a, uh, that's not a good number. Uh, note here, this, this number right here, and before every period, the highest you can get to is 255. Um, it starts from 0 to 255, so yes, it's 256 values. But that's um, in each one of these. I forget the high-tech word we use because I don't memorize that kind of crap. But So you notice that I don't have anything here that is above 255 and is below 0. So these are all legal, or not should say legal, they should, they're going to work. <laughs> Made it sound like something could be illegal or legal. <laughs> um, but uh, invalid, let's say, but it's valid. So if I wanted to connect to that, I know what it is. Now I can set up this client right here that I'm making, um, connect to this address. And simply, it's just the it's just the winsock one dot connect to this, and then I'm gonna need the port, which is gonna be comma I believe in the port. But um, if I know my IP address, then that's what I'm gonna decide is the server. So everybody's gonna connect to this IP address. When their game starts up, it's gonna connect to that, and it's gonna be my server. If my server is offline, it will not go to this address. Um, it will say there's invalid error, can't reach it. However, you could say in code, if that address doesn't work, connect to this other address and so forth. So you can have multiple servers. Um, that's what you see in a lot of the games. Um, they have multiple servers too. Uh, usually they check to see how fast your computer is running on internet bandwidth. So if, if it's really fast, they'll keep you connected to a server. If it's overloaded at that server, they'll switch you to another. But we've got it for now. Let's just say it's that. Um, so what happens with the host? We know the Winsock client is going to connect to an IP address as soon as it turns on. Um, the host gets this message that says, hey, someone's trying to connect. And the host has to accept this connection. Once it accepts the connection, then it's basically like a handshake. It says, hey, uh, how are you? I know you now. You can do whatever you want. Um, but if you can't accept the connection then it will just hang and it will give an error um, also when you're trying to connect you'll have to disconnect and reconnect and I think that's going a little too much right now but um, the main thing is is getting the handshake the host is the one that does the handshake so since the client will connect it will ask for a handshake the host will give the handshake and give it to the client now Let's say you want that host to be that multiple connections, as many as you want. When this client right here, let me go ahead and make a new form real quick, just to show an example. This is going to get a little confusing if you don't pay attention. All right, let's say this is the host. Okay, this one, the form two is going to be the host one. This this one is going to need an index of zero. Okay, so we're using a control array. If you haven't watched that video, you need to see it. You need to see all my videos before you watch this video. Um, so this is index of zero. This one doesn't need an index because it's going to be the client. It's going to connect to this other window here, and then what's going to happen is index zero is listening. It's listening for a connection. Once it sees a connection, it's going to make a handshake, and it's going to copy this control creating another. The reason for that being is because this one will stay listening the whole time. It can get another client from some other computer, they will connect to it, it will get a handshake, copy this control and post another one. So we'll have two control, two other extra controls right here that are saying hey someone's connected here and another person's connected here. Okay, so now sending data. Once somebody connects to the host, the host can send data back. But how does this person, let's say this first person right here, send code to a person that's somewhere else? Well, basically, the whole concept is they're connected to the server. Okay, so we have two clients. 
two clients connected to server. So one client decides, hey, I want to send data to another client, not the host. Well, technically, the host will get that data because you're only connected to the server. Okay, does this make sense? If I was to draw a picture, um, it's easier to use paint, but let's say I have one client here. Okay, there's our two clients, and below is the server. This one sends data here, then the server sends it to him. Okay, sorry, this reputation kind of is cruddy, but let's do it this way okay okay so this this one this is a client connected to a server this is a client connected to a server now these clients can't see each other what keeps them connected is the fact that this client sees the server and this client over here sees the server so how do you send data from one client to the other what happens is this client right here sends data to the server the server sends the data then to whoever it's connected to, which is this client. So that's why you see video games, they have servers and they'll have 16 players and one person has to host to keep them all connected. Because you can't go client to client to client to client. It goes client to server and then all the clients are connected to a server. Um, so if this person sends a message to the server, then the server gets it, posts the message on his own chat room, but then sends a message to the other client saying, hey, post a message in their chat room. Now, here's an important thing that people don't tend to realize. If you ever wonder why some of those video games that you play are kind of laggy, kind of glitchy, um, there's something that they miss, and I try to point this out a lot, especially in Gears of War 1. Um, or in, if you've ever played South Park 1, you wonder why why does somebody have a really high ping and they're able to kick my ass even though I have a really low ping and it's not working. You shoot him in the head. It doesn't show what happens. Well, there's two, thing, two ways to do this. One, you can send the data to the server that says, hey, this guy got shot, but it has to send the data back to the client saying, hey, I got shot. Or two, you can show on the person's screen the client is first saying, hey, this guy got shot, that it shows it first, hey, I got shot. It doesn't try to confirm a message from the server. So let me do it in easier terms. This, this computer right here decides, hey, I want to write a message, and I send it to the server. Okay, the server gets the data, and then comes back and verifies, okay, now show it on the screen for this client. And then the server says, okay, now show it on the screen for the other client. That's a lot longer. That's a big mistake to make. Um, the best way is this. This client is deciding to make a message. Well, as soon as he writes it in his own code on his computer screen, it's going to write it. It's not going to go to the server and say, hey, give me a message, then come back to me and write it. That's a big mistake. So his own computer is going to say, I'm writing it. And then the other one will say, um, at this place we'll get the data and then write it and send it to him and then this one will get the data. So this one never actually got data saying, hey, write it on my screen because it already knew, hey, let's just write it on my screen in code. So when we're writing this in code, um, I'm going to go really slow and it kind of show that what I just talked about. Um, that's going to do it for now, and like I said, this might be a little confusing. Please rewatch this. Um, this is not going to be easy. That's all there is to it. I can explain, explain it, try to explain it best I can a million times, and it's still not going to come out easy. Um, but the more and more you practice with it, you'll get it pretty good down. Um, I just, just saying, everybody pretty much makes mistakes in this part because it's not easy. It's very difficult. Um, you, some people that are even advanced think it's easy at one point, but they still make mistakes. Um, there's a lot of things to consider, even data loss and and reconnecting and um, losing connection and coming back. So uh, we're going to end it off for now. Send me any questions. Um, thanks for watching this video.